Welcome back to the Hang Gliding Files. Uh, today we're going to do something a bit different in this video. Uh, this video is not directly related to hang gliding itself, but there are some hang gliding involved. Uh, it was just something new, and I thought we'd uh, give it a try and uh, share. In this video, I'm going to show you a cool way to create a, a new hang glider flying site. And the way we're going to do this is by driving up to our new potential launch site inside a flight simulator. Pretty weird, right? Well, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is essentially a simulated twin of Earth where you move around on that Earth as an aviation avatar. But it doesn't have to be that way, so just ask the developers over at Parallel 42. Well, what you're seeing here is the Parallel 42 Juice Goose. It's a pay-for add-on product that lets you choose to use this ground vehicle as your aircraft. You actually uh, select it into your hangar. It provides plenty of built-in scenery as part of that product that you can use uh, by just using their teleportation tool that's built right into the, uh, the dashboard. All these areas that they provide have a lot of fun things to do, like jumps and curated scenes and other stuff that you can see and that's all fun to do but I like to do my own thing I want to see where I can go in this world and you can do that by just placing the goose anywhere on earth and then just start driving and I find that to be a lot more fun so as you drive through this world you will need to be able to quickly switch into slew mode this is toggled by using the Y key in slew mode you're no longer driving but you can still move the goose using the controller and this is how you get around the impassable objects and the features. The F4 and F1 keys raise and lower your altitude, and that's just a way to uh, get around um, when things can't be driven. Another issue is navigation. The ground level buildings, etc., are not real life renders like a Google Street View, so you can't navigate even a familiar area that you're, use you're used to using local knowledge, let alone somewhere that you've never been. Roads are not marked. There are no street signs or road signs. Remember, this is Mad Max. But the Goose comes with a navigation map on the dashboard, and that's a good at helping you stay on the road even when you can't see the road in the sim. I've used this feature to even drive dirt roads and 4x4 goat paths. It's very handy. But I also use another um, add-in, which is the Sky for Sim map. And this allows me to navigate distances and to get to specific places. And you really need a real map with street names and cities and such. And that's why I use this feature. Well, what you're seeing in this video is um, me uh, driving up the Foo Car, I hope that's the way you say it, pass in Switzerland. So I, tried, I decided to uh, drive up this uh, pass because it's one of the most scenic drives in the entire world. It has a lot of switchbacks, high mountains, bridges, and the scenery is just spectacular in the real world. And I'd like to know what it would look like if um, you drove that in a simulator that is built to see this uh, scenery from the air. In this video, I'm using real weather and doing this in real local time. There's nothing better than using real weather when using this sim for both driving and flying hang gliders. It just makes things so much more interesting and fits with my I don't like boxes ethos with this simulator. You should expect to find that the roads are going to be as if there was no longer any government to repair or maintain the roads in this world. Like, no repairs in the last 100 years. Rough. It's a rough road. Uh, just think of it like if you were in a first person in the history of this Mad Max Earth to ever drive down whatever road you choose. No programmer or tester has ever tried what you may try and do, so things are not and will not be perfect. That said, I find it interesting. All the other road traffic that you see on the road is not real. They're just ghosts of ice cars of history. 
they don't even always drive in the right direction. You can just drive right through them like they're not even there. But they do provide some visual help in keeping on the road. Uh, in addition, I'm also using the Sky Dolly recording uh, tool, which is an add-on, to record my flight or drive. Uh, this allows me to replay a session and go to specific spots again very quickly. And you might use this to go back after a drive to set up some flying sites. And you may have noticed uh, in our driving session, I will show you how to do just that. The first thing you can do is to create a new site. And here we are going to create a new site. And we do this by starting the hang gliding file uh, desktop application and just create a new record. Another cool thing you can do is to use the slew mode to locate other spawn points you may like for a site as you explore the area. You can use the slew mode to move your current goose or any aircraft to fly around near your current location and find other suitable possibilities. Just put the current aircraft in the spot that you want to capture and connect it to the simulator and there you go. Well, that is how you can have a fun using this new add-on and build your own hang gliding sites at the same time. Now, don't be surprised if you see more like things like this coming from us soon. There is no limit as to what a developer could dream up as an avatar in this simulated Earth. Parallel 42 is a great developer and should be supported. With uh, Flight Simulator 2024 coming soon, expect much greater details in the ground level rendering. Don't think so? Go back and watch the demo videos one more time with this in mind. Well, also within a hang gliding site, you should probably think about trying to capture a landing area too, and uh, you can do the same exact procedure that you use to create the uh, launch site as the landing area. So you just need to put your aircraft or vehicle in uh, a likely landing zone and capture that as well. Well, what you get by doing this little bit of effort is that you automatically put these sites into your uh, hang gliding files widget site database and what you want to do after that is go ahead and use that and test it and here we are coming back to the pass we've changed the date and time to be uh, summer and now we're going to evaluate whether or not this is a launchable flying site and in this case we've uh, added an additional launch up on top near the um, ski lift and off we go Well, as we were doing our test flying, we saw another site that looked like a more likely uh, alternative uh, launch site right off the side of the road. And so here we are uh, using that same hang gliding file app to add an, a brand new uh, launch site to the database. Well, and as part of that, we also slewed over to what is a really good alternative landing area on the other side for this new launch site. And so we just slewed our aircraft over, put it on the ground, and again, use the app to uh, capture this information and put it in as a new landing area in the database. It's just that simple. I'll leave you with a couple of shots of us driving uh, up to a couple of our favorite flying sites just to give you a feel for different places and conditions. You'll be able to find everything that I've talked about uh, with links in this video down in the description. 
If you like this video or would like to keep up with us as we continue our ongoing development of hang gliding tools and aircraft for the simulator, or you want just want to watch some of our upcoming hang gliding adventure videos, please like and subscribe. Anyway, later, see you on the hill. Thank you.